is a saying, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And it's a basic mnemonic to remind oneself when uh, in a, say, uh, a moral quandary, you try to think, what would Jesus do? What would my Lord and Savior do in this situation? Would he stab and murder this person that I'm disagreeing with or would he turn the other cheek? And it's a handy little mnemonic just to remind you always to like keep that little that little uh, angel on your shoulder. So we're going to, <laughs> to take that and, and bastardize it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we're going to turn it into what would Jesus do? Are we the crazy ones uh, version? Where we're going to take character or the, the author or the, 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 the stimulus for the episode and we're going to ask, what would that person do in a series of situations? And we're basically going to take a few ex- examples of hot button t- political issues and ask, what would Evola do in, in this particular situation? And <laughs> we'll see if we can, we can, we can uh, guess what Evola's point of view would be uh, to modern hot, hot button issues. And hopefully solve some of these conflicts too. Using the wisdom of Julius Evola. So Levi, okay. what's what's the first prompt? Let's start off. We, we can jump straight into the big guns, but we'll start off nice and easy. Uh, gay marriage, Jack. What would Evola do? No. You you are Julius Evola right now. No. Tell us. No. No. Is that a hard no? That's a, <laughs> that's a very hard no. He never brings up homosexuality explicitly. It's just I can't see any world in which. A tradition like marriage, which was traditionally, at least in the West, between a man and a woman, in which he would say, okay, well, you can change that to have two men or two women marrying. So one, like, he, he's, he's so, he, he's a traditionalist. He doesn't want to change tradition. Also it's that title. he, I'm not sure how he would view spiritually the union between, say, two men, two people of the masculine, unmoving. unmoving substance. I'm not sure how that would work spiritually. You need, you need feminine chaos and mutability. My question is to be who would influenced. be devoted to who? Yeah, exactly. So spiritually, it's just not going to work. In the same way, if you have two women of the with contingent, changeable natures, they will have no stable virility upon which to focus their energies <laughs> <laughs> it'll be pure chaos so for for practical and spiritual reasons i i don't think everyone would agree so you you've got to understand that like these are counterbalancing uh natures and the woman is supposed to be entirely devoted to the man mm. two men trying to get married they're not going to be devoted to one another. Well, like if you and have, I also have in terms of in terms of practicality. If one of them dies in a holy war, well, one, why didn't the other one fucking get out there and do his part and die in the goddamn holy war? And secondly, is he then supposed to throw his body upon the funeral pyre of of the of the of the partner who died in the holy war? And that wouldn't work because that's a fundamentally feminine act. And yeah, because that's an act of pure devotion. Yeah. So to that's the, uh, lover. look. I I just think this can't work. <laughs> okay, what about okay, Jack? Okay, what about could you be? And this will bring us on to hot button hot, hot button issue uh, number two. Could you be a male in the inferior realm of being becoming, but be a female in the superior realm of being? Or inversely, be a female in the inferior realm of becoming and a male in the superior realm of being. Could you spiritually be of one gender but (laughs) be embodied in a different gender? Same with same-sex marriage. I have a really hard time seeing Evola being a trans ally. He just... (laughs) He, he doesn't immediately suggest <laughs> himself as, as an ally. Um, it, because the soul, bef- the, the soul chooses its body, the, the soul exists before 
in the world of being before manifesting in the world of becoming so uh, at his most diplomatic i'm sure he would say it's confusion as to why someone whose soul <laughs> is masculine thinks that they're feminine okay so what what about us but i would at the same time then if they're deciding this what if their soul what if that was part of the soul that chose the body that it has a certain nature but is or that it may appear to have a certain nature but truly has another nature yeah or what if it's just a soul that um is just like really transgressive like <laughs> just it's just like, like Marilyn Manson or something he's not a fan of transgression though he talks about how it's just Hollow right, titillation yeah, that moderns obsess <laughs> Hollow t- titillation. <laughs> yeah. So okay. No. All right, all right. All right. So is it? So okay. How do you explain transgen the the modern <laughs> other than the well, fact that it's just modern? <laughs> yeah, I think he just viewed it as decadence. It's more we've lost our we've decadence. lost our link to above. So we crazy more moderns chaos. start doing all sorts of weird non spiritual things. Okay, so we've already conceded no gay marriage uh, mm. and all that. But what about LGBTI adoption? What about gay adoption? So you've got two men. They want to adopt a son. So what, what if you've got two high caste men who, who they're not married, which can't get married, but they're dating one another. They still have a harem of women each, so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but they also adopt... A low caste boy. Under his system, the boy child can never be initiated. It's yeah, probably not. You couldn't you couldn't initiate the child, so it'll never be part of the family. Because he talks about how spiritual paternity is more important than than material maternity. He talks about how so could, could one a, a high born family can adopt the son of another highborn family and initiate them into that family's lineage and that son then becomes their son spiritually. But you need to be highborn. So if they're lowborn, it's a total non-starter because they can't, yeah, they're just okay. not spiritually cut out for initiation. Okay. We've spoken In about terms of it being two men oh, adopting, I guess like that, that's just back to the gay marriage thing. Like he'd say, you can't. Do that. You can't do it. <laughs> You're not allowed okay, to. Okay, so we've spoken about transgendered people in general, but I want to talk about something really specific. And Joe Rogan's copped a lot of heat for this recently. But what about? <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. What happened with uh, uh, the female athletes who are like male to female transgendered athletes who are competing in uh, uh. Ivy League sports and maybe other sports leagues, but recently I heard about uh, I, this Ivy League athlete. She's competing as a woman in their swimming, and she she was she grew up as as a as a man, and she's undergone uh, the hormone therapy to undergo transition or whatever the 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 regulations require for her to be able to compete and she trounced all the other all the other female athletes like trounced them and not only did she trounce them but she smashed the record by like a huge margin like just to just i know to say if it's a hundred if it's a hundred meter freestyle beat, beat it by like 10 or 15 seconds like some ridiculous margin um what what does Evola say to that situation wait to women doing sport you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is a okay. A transgender no, no, no. man. Come so she on, has mate. the spirit. You, you know of what a he man. thinks of, of, of she women. She has the spirit sport. of a man, but now she has the body of a woman. But she has the spirit of a man. But she's still doing sport. Yeah, look, it's. I think it. <laughs> a man, a man, in 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 Evela's view, a man thinking they're a woman is. Is is just like their their spirit is somehow broken. Like that won't work. 
women competing in sport <laughs> that also doesn't work. <laughs> just doesn't like, work. There's, 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 there's just nothing here that I think Evola right. would be able to get behind. What about the w, the WAFL? So, no. Evola's a hard no in the WA. For, <laughs> for, for non-Australian <laughs> listeners, can you explain what the WAFL is? <laughs> the, the WAFL is, um, is the Women's AFL, the Australian Football League. <laughs> and <laughs> so, in Evola's view, that's, a, that's an oxymoron, I suppose. <laughs> Just yeah, because he. So it, because we, because we live in a spiritually fallen time, none of these are going to be sacred games. Like the grand final is not a spiritually significant sacred game that transfigures the players. <laughs> so and and those were the things that women really couldn't take part in. But he did have a few quotes when he was talking about the relationship between men and women, where he made clear that he disapproved of women physically training. And playing sports, so I just I I don't think he'd be on board with this. <laughs> okay, so what about racial sensitivity training? I mean, what kind of race? Because he's got he's got his weirdo <laughs> he's got his weirdo view of race, the, the spiritual in, race in his view of race under 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 Evola's view of race. So he is a racist, but he's just a spiritual racist. Yeah, he's a really weird racist. I guess I mean, in some sense, maybe he'd say that you're focusing on purely material things and not spiritual race. Like, oh, I mean, one, so racial sensitivity training is predicated upon our modern idea that there is a fundamental equality between people. Which there isn't. No, and that's exactly Evelyn's point. <laughs> there is there is a fundamental hierarchy, and you need to acknowledge the hierarchy. So and if that, if say racial sensitivity training were encouraging race. people of a highborn caste to accept lowborn caste members, then that would be totally unacceptable. That just invites feminine chaos into into the world. But I, in terms of today, when everything's fucked, and when we have no link to above, then like, what, then so what? Like, we're all we're all spiritually fallen. We're in terms of our spiritual race, we're all degenerate. I don't know. Like, would it does it, would it would it make a difference from Evola's perspective if everything is terrible? <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, what about? Eminent domain. Eminent that's, domain. That's uh, just so. Pe- it's, uh, yeah, should the government? Uh, ev- eminent do- domain is like a legal concept that basically says uh, the government should be allowed to seize property. Um, you know, depending on the jurisdiction, with or without compensation for public good. Ah. Oh. So, uh, the Berliners. I <laughs> the Berliners have a, have an issue with this with the government. Just like this. Uh, Maybe I, I'm maybe it's not Berlin, but I'm pretty sure I've heard stories about Berlin where they're just like government will just be like, yeah, all right, uh, this sort of this whole neighborhood, yeah, where we're uh, claiming eminent domain, get get the fuck out. Ah. <laughs> maybe they'll give them some money. Well, it depends on the type of land, doesn't it? Because there are those two ways of relating to land. <laughs> There's the the feminine, tilleric, naturalistic, earthly way of relating to land, where you just perform demonic, totemic rituals upon it. And then there's the elevated and aristocratic way where you you perform a rite to purge a piece of land of its demonic character and then pass that on to your, your spiritual descendants. So And it depends on the type of government. If it's a if it's a divine king, then he can probably do whatever the fuck he wants. If it's a nasty secular government and they try to take away land with an aristocratic triumphal spiritual seal upon it that's absolutely unacceptable it's abhorrent so if we imagine for a second that levi and jack have been ordained by some weird circumstance by the sun god ra uh to to be the great reformers (laughs) we're going to be the harbingers of the new golden age and it's the end of the kali yuga and lo and behold actually it's me and jack (laughs) You heard it here first. So we're going to be riding around on a golden chariot, um, enforcing Evola's point of view on the 
<laughs> we will claim eminent eminent domain on all on all the bits of land that are sacred, and we'll be. Uh, I suppose we would even be able to claim lands that are desecrated, right, and purge them or, or cleanse them. Oh yeah, presumably. Well, that's yeah. an act of. He describes that as an act of creation. It's not. It's not merely morally <laughs> neutral, but it's a good thing that you. You place a triumphal seal upon formerly demonic land. Okay, another great <laughs> gender issue in Jack and Levi's Evolian Revolution of the Golden Age. <laughs> um, we should call it the the Evola Party of Australia. <laughs> okay, so equal pay. You know, all these people going on at the moment, 70 cents to the dollar. Mm-hmm. What does Evola say to that? Why are women working? <laughs> a, I think that's a pretty clear one. Like, I just why aren't you devoting yourself as either a mother or a lover? Yeah. to one man, neither with or without these, sister wives. Neither of these are, pa- are, are passive paths towards ascendance. I mean, the, the, <laughs> working in a material job rather than dedicating yourself to either your father, your husband, or your son, so that you can transcend. And not die the second death. That's its absurdity. <laughs> it's... Here, okay, has, has, has there been any issue we've come up with yet that Evola hasn't been against? Okay, well, I'll see if I can find a pro Evola, uh, one that Evola would get get around. Electoral issues? Well, he'd just be against all electoral. <laughs> he issues. just doesn't believe in elections. <laughs> Healthcare issues, science issues. Okay. Uh, well, torture. We already know who stands on that. <laughs> okay, so what would Julius Evola think about North Korea and particularly about mandatory military service? He didn't like. Uh, he really didn't like modern materialistic totalitarianism, which is what North Korea is. It's a a, no, a, no, a no, notionally no, no, no. secular state where. The, the, no, it's not the Kim. The Kim family are the are the divinities, the the divine it's a non divinities. Don't don't you think? Sorry, like it is a it is a theocracy, isn't it? Aren't they taken as divine? It seems it seems to be the case. Although they they're also communists, so they like to talk about how they don't believe yeah, in true. silly fairy tales like religion. So they're not alive. They're not alive still. Yeah, right. Okay, but. And and the society is definitely very centred on the Kim family or members of the Kim family, and it seems, at least, it seems to be. So he he might like that aspect. I don't think there's no link to above, which is the ultimate problem. So military service for North Korea would not entail a lesser holy war in service to the greater holy war of transcendence. So he'd ultimately oppose it. But if if the Kims were divine kings, then it would actually be really good. Okay, so in that case, he would be pro-Taliban. Like Afghanistan, the issue in Afghanistan recently, he'd be like, get the fuck out, America. Let the Taliban... He would be pro-Taliban. I mean, in some, in some ways... His view of modern religions are very degraded forms of tradition. So I'm, I don't know whether the Taliban would count as, whether the Taliban were a sufficiently spiritual organization, spiritual in the correct sense, to <laughs> transfigure society and allow members of society to partake in the world of being. Like there's no divine yes. king in the way that Evola wants. Yeah, I don't reckon that'd work either. All right, there we have it. Uh, as as the title of the of the book might suggest, <laughs> what would Evola do? He would revolt and reject every single policy <laughs> proposition that we just put forward. He, he doesn't like it. <laughs> he doesn't like any of it. 